In Section 2 of this STEM instructional program, we are discussing how aircraft are controlled in flight. In this lesson, we will be introducing you to the basic concepts of flight control in helicopters or rotary winged aircraft. While helicopters move in the same three dimensions that an airplane does, it accomplishes these maneuvers quite differently. This lesson will provide you with the basics of helicopter operations. There is significantly more involved than can be presented at this level. As was introduced in Lesson 1 to this section, an aircraft moves in three dimensions that we modeled using a three-dimensional graph with an X, Y, and Z axis. Basic aircraft controls allow an airplane to rotate around the Y axis or perform a yaw maneuver using a rudder located on a vertical tail, to rotate around the X axis or pitch using elevators located on the horizontal tail, and to rotate around the Z axis or roll using ailerons located on the wings of the aircraft. A helicopter moves in these three planes, just as an airplane does, but without many of the traditional flight surfaces. It might be easier to understand these controls if we looked at direction of motion in addition to rotations. More specifically, we will look at rotation around and motion along the Y or vertical axis and motion within the XZ plane. A helicopter is classified as a rotary wing aircraft. In other words, a helicopter does have wings, but the wings rotate around a central hub or hubs. A helicopter's main rotor or rotor system is the combination of several rotary wings or rotor blades and a control system that generates the aerodynamic lift force that supports the weight of the helicopter and the thrust that counteracts aerodynamic drag in forward flight. The main difference between a helicopter and a fixed-wing aircraft is the fact that both the lifting force and the thrust or horizontal force in a helicopter are generated by the same rotating blades. Directional and rotational motion of a helicopter is accomplished through three control mechanisms. A counter-torque control, collective control, and cyclic control, which will be introduced in this lesson. With a single main rotor helicopter, the creation of torque as the engine turns the rotor blades creates a torque effect. When viewed from above, the vast majority of helicopter rotors turn counterclockwise, creating a counterclockwise torque. By Newton's third law of motion, that torque causes the body of the helicopter to rotate in the opposite direction of the rotor motion or in a clockwise direction. To eliminate this rotation, some sort of anti-torque control must be developed to allow the helicopter to maintain its heading and to provide yaw control. This is accomplished through a variable pitch anti-torque rotor or tail rotor. The tail rotor is a small propeller mounted so that it rotates vertically or near vertically at the end of the tail of a traditional single rotor helicopter. The tail rotor's position allows it to develop thrust in a horizontal direction. As it is placed at a distance from the center of rotation of the main blades, it produces a torque or rotational motion. One of the functions of the tail rotor is to counter the torque effect created by the main rotor. The tail rotors are simpler than main rotors since they require only collective changes in pitch to vary thrust. The pitch of the tail rotor blades is adjustable by the pilot via the anti-torque pedals. These pedals provide directional control by allowing the pilot to maintain a constant heading or to rotate the helicopter around its vertical or Y axis, changing the direction of the craft as pointed. The anti-torque pedals are located in the same place as the rudder pedals in an airplane and serve a similar purpose. They control the direction that the nose of the aircraft points. As the main rotor is constantly producing torque, the tail rotor blades must be set at a pitch angle greater than zero to counteract this torque. 
when the rotor torque and the counter torque produced by the tail rotor are equal, the helicopter maintains a constant heading. To rotate the helicopter to the right, the pilot would depress the right anti-torque pedal, which would increase the pitch of the tail rotors. By increasing the pitch of the tail rotor blades, the torque generated by the tail is larger than needed to counteract the torque made by the main rotor. By Newton's second law of motion, the helicopter will rotate in the direction of the larger torque, which is produced by the tail rotor, or in this case, rotate in a clockwise direction or turn to the right. To rotate the helicopter to the left, the pilot would depress the left anti-torque pedal, which would decrease the pitch of the tail rotors. By decreasing the pitch of the tail rotor blades, the torque generated by the tail is smaller than needed to counteract the torque made by the main rotor. Again, by Newton's second law of motion, the helicopter will rotate in the direction of the larger torque, which is now the torque caused by the main rotor, and rotate in a counterclockwise direction, or turn to the left. Depressing the anti-torque pedal on the right increases the pitch of the tail rotor blades, and depressing the pedal on the left decreases the pitch of the tail rotor blades. This increases or decreases tail rotor thrust and makes the nose yaw in the direction of the applied pedal. It should be noted that the maiden rotor blades in French and Russian helicopters rotate in a clockwise direction, so work in a reverse as far as increase and decrease in pitch are concerned. But in all helicopters, left pedals turn the helicopter left and right pedals turn it right. To begin to understand how motion along the y-axis and motion in the xz plane is accomplished in a helicopter, we need to look at a concept called the rotor disc. The rotor disc is the area in which the main rotors operate. As the main blades rotate, they push the air in the rotor disc downward. The opposite force, by Newton's third law of motion, action-reaction, is an upward force on the helicopter itself. This upward force causes the rotor blades to flex or bend upward, which changes the location and, in some conditions, the tilt of the rotor disc. The helicopter uses this rotor disc motion and tilting to move along the y-axis and within the x-z plane. The main drive of a helicopter is developed through a central mast. The central mast transmits power from the engine through a transmission to the rotors. Located around the central mast is a device called a swashplate. The mast runs upward through the center of the swashplate. The swashplate is actually made of two concentric discs or plates. The top, or rotating plate, moves with a mass and is connected to the rotor blades by connecting tubes, one tube per blade. The rotating plate is also connected to the individual plates through links that allow the tubes to change the pitch of the individual rotor blades. The bottom portion of the swash plate does not rotate. The non-rotating plate is connected to links that are manipulated by pilot controls specifically the collective and cyclic controls. By use of these controls, the swash plate can shift vertically and tilt. Through shifting and tilting, the non-rotating plate controls the rotating plate, which in turn controls the individual blade pitch. The collective pitch control, or collective lever, is located on the left side of the pilot's seat and looks rather like an old-fashioned handbrake in a car. It is used to enable the helicopter to move along the y-axis or to climb and descend. The collective changes the pitch angle of all the main rotor blades collectively or all at the same time and is independent of their position in the rotation. Raising the collective lever causes the swash plate to move upward. This upward motion causes the connecting tubes to increase the pitch of all the rotor blades increasing lift, which causes the helicopter to climb. Lowering the collective lever causes the swash plate to move downward, which causes the connection rods to reduce the pitch of the rotor blades. The rotor disc is lowered, 
and the lift provided by the rotor decreases. When the lifting force is less than the weight of the helicopter, the helicopter descends. Therefore, if a collective input is made, all the blades change equally, and as a result, the helicopter increases or decreases its total lift derived from the rotor. In level flight, this would cause a climb or descent. If the helicopter is not level, an additional motion is produced. If the rotor disc were tilted forward, backward, or to the left or right, the blades would still produce a force perpendicular to the rotor disc. As the rotor disc is now tilted, we must separate the force into two parts. The first force is the one that opposes the acceleration of gravity or pulls the helicopter upward. The second force acts perpendicular to the upward force. By Newton's second law of motion, this force would cause the helicopter to accelerate in the direction of that force or move within the XZ plane. To produce this tilting is the function of the cyclic control. The cyclic control, commonly called the cyclic stick or just cyclic, is similar in appearance on most helicopters to a joystick from a conventional aircraft. It is usually located between the pilot's legs, but on some helicopters it is a central pillar that either pilot can manipulate. The control is called the cyclic because it changes the pitch angle of the individual rotor blades as they rotate around the mast. Remember for collective motion, the pitch on all of the blades is changed together and the whole rotor disc moves upward or downward. To tilt the helicopter forward and backward, or sideways, requires that controls alter the angle of attack of the main rotor blades individually during rotation, creating differing amounts of lift force at different points in the cycle. As the pitch angle changes and more lift is generated, the blades flex upward. For cyclic control, the result is to tip the rotor disc in a particular direction causing the helicopter to move in that direction. To produce forward flight, a helicopter's flight controls behave somewhat differently than those in a fixed-wing aircraft. Moving the cyclic forward causes the swash plate to tip forward. This causes the connecting rods to increase the pitch of the rotor blades as they move toward the rear of the helicopter and decrease pitch as they move toward the front. This action tilts the rotor disc to the front with minimum lift toward the nose and maximum lift toward the tail of the helicopter. When the rotor disc rotates forward, it produces a force acting toward the front of the aircraft. It also makes the nose pitch down, thus losing altitude, but increasing the rotor disc tilt and increases forward acceleration. A corresponding increase in collective control would be required to keep the helicopter from losing altitude. Coordinating these two inputs, forward collective plus increased cyclic causes airspeed changes while maintaining a constant altitude. Moving the cyclic backwards causes the swash plate to tilt toward the rear of the helicopter. This causes the connecting rods to decrease the pitch of the rotor blades as they move toward the rear of the helicopter and increase pitch as they move toward the front. This action tilts the rotor disc to the rear with maximum lift toward the nose and minimum lift toward the tail of the helicopter. When the rotor disc rotates backward, it produces a force acting toward the rear of the aircraft. It also makes the nose pitch up, which increases the rotor disc tilt and increases rearward acceleration. A corresponding increase in collective control would be required to keep the helicopter from losing altitude as it moves backwards. To make the helicopter move to the left, the pilot would move the cyclic control to the left. Moving the cyclic to the left causes the swash plate to tilt to the left. This causes the connecting rods to decrease the pitch of the rotor blades as they move toward the left side of the helicopter and increase pitch as they move toward the right. This action tilts the rotor disc to the left with maximum lift toward the right side and minimum lift toward the left side of the helicopter. 
When the rotor disc rotates to the left, it produces a force also acting toward the left. It also makes the helicopter roll to the left, thus losing altitude but increasing the rotor disc tilt and increases acceleration to the left. Again, a corresponding increase in collective control would be required to keep the helicopter from losing altitude. To coordinate a left-hand turn, the anti-torque control must be added to move the nose of the helicopter in that direction. To make the helicopter move to the right, the pilot would move the cyclic control to the right. Moving the cyclic to the right causes the swash plate to tilt to the right. This causes the connecting rods to decrease pitch of the rotor blades as they move toward the right side of the helicopter and increase pitch as they move toward the left. This action tilts the rotor disc to the right with maximum lift toward the left side and minimum lift toward the right side of the helicopter. When the rotor disc rotates to the right, it produces a force also acting to the right. It also makes the helicopter roll to the right increasing rotor disc tilt and increasing acceleration to the right. Again, a corresponding increase in collective control would be required to keep the helicopter from losing altitude. To coordinate a left-hand turn, the anti-torque control must be added to move the nose of the helicopter in that direction. The same use of the cyclic and collective can cause the helicopter to move in any direction. Coupled with the anti-torque system, the helicopter has a wide range of motions not possible in a traditional fixed-wing aircraft. All the controls need to be carefully coordinated to make steady flight possible. It is this constant requirement for careful coordination which makes flying a helicopter difficult, at least in the beginning. Then, of course, there's learning how to hover. But that is another matter.